morning, everybody. My name is Al, and thanks for joining me. Today, folks, I want to talk about the, one of the most famous sitcoms in history, The Honeymooners, and what better place to talk about it is at a bus stop. So stay tuned for an awesome fun facts video about The Honeymooners. So I guess, folks, it's appropriate that I'm here sitting in um, sunny Florida because Jackie Gleason, who was actually born in Brooklyn um, at uh, 328 Chauncey Street, which is an address that he used for The Honeymooners, also 358 Chauncey Street. He was actually born in uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant, and that's where that address technically is located, although the honeymooners did take place in Bensonhurst. But I guess it's appropriate that I'm here sitting in sunny Florida doing this video because Jackie Gleason ended up passing away in Florida, and he lived in Florida for a long time. But just to start with the honeymooners, just a totally amazing show. When you think about it, it's actually fascinating about the honeymooners because we talk about the classic 39 episodes and you'd never folks who folks would never believe um the impact of the show that was only on television for one year it ran on cbs uh from 1955 up until 1956 and it just has had so much impact it was so groundbreaking as a show you know one of the shows that it inspired that a lot of people don't realize was the famous cartoon the flintstones but Back in those days, you really didn't have shows based on working class families. And Ralph was the epitome of the working class guy. I mean, he, uh, he drove a bus, he lived in the apartment on the third floor. In fact, they lived in apartment 3B in uh, 328 or 358 Chauncey Street, whichever one you prefer. And he was married to Alice, Joyce, uh, uh, Al um, who was played by uh, Audrey Meadows. And, you had Joyce Randolph in the show, and you had, uh, of course, Ed Norton in the show. Uh, Ed Norton, of course, was the famous Art Carney, who a lot of people know from the, the series Batman. He, uh, he played in that. I'll throw a picture up of that. Pretty, pretty funny. A lot, of, a lot of the famous celebrities showed up in that show. And one of my favorite things that Art Carney was ever in was a, a movie called Tonto and Me, where he actually won an Academy Award. It's a fabulous movie. You might want to check that out. But back to the Honeymooners. I think what was so great about the Honeymooners was that not only did Ralph actually come from Brooklyn and he worked in Brooklyn, of course he worked for the fictitious bus company, the Gotham Bus Company, but we all knew that was the uh, New York City Transit Authority. And um, what was so great about the show was that Ralph was just a regular guy. He was kind of the guy from the neighborhood. He was, you know, the working class guy. They lived in the apartment up there and they didn't have much money. They were always struggling, and there just wasn't shows like that back then, you know. The shows really were set up in middle-class families. You didn't have people who struggled. You didn't have people who had friends who were sewer workers. You know, their life was just very regular. They belonged to the Raccoon Lodge, which, you know, a lot of people belonged to lodges back then, and clubs, and it was just, Ralph was just such a lovable, regular character. And of course, who could forget the famous sayings? Even people who have never seen the show, um, know all the famous sayings you know to the moon alice uh who, who could forget that and uh you're a riot alice you know it was just this dynamic back and forth between him and his wife where you knew they loved each other very very much but there was just this, this tension of, of regular everyday life and everyday stress you know just the fact that he would he would go out the window and he called norton who lived on who lived up above him and norton would just happen to show up at all these crazy times and you know how, how Ralph was just so regular. You know, Ralph was a chubby guy. He was overweight. And Norton was always making fun of his weight. And it was just, so was Alice. So it was just, he was a very enjoyable character. And I think people took to him. And the show was just written so beautifully and so magnificently that it was just perfection. You know, and back in the 1950s, when that was made, you know, there was a lot of transitions going on in Brooklyn. If you think about it, the Dodgers and the uh, Giants left town right about 1957. And I think in some kind of subtle way, you know, if you think about when the last trolley cars were phasing out in New York City and in Brooklyn, that was right around the time the Honeymooners was made. So I think there was still some tension going on from people who lived in Brooklyn um, who, who really, um, they didn't want to see the trolley car go. I know my uncle who passed away at a very young age, he had a heart problem and he, he was a big fan of the trolley car, and we actually have a lot of family home movies about um, that he took on the last trolley cars. In fact, 
the high school that I went to, Bishop Ford Central Catholic High School on 19th Street and uh, Prospect Park West was actually a trolley barn originally. Before that, it was a Civil War prison. So there was a lot of people still hanging on for the trolley and pulling for the trolley. You know, Ralph Cramden was just such a part of Brooklyn, such a part of New York, such a part of the Transit Authority. If you go to the Port Authority today on 42nd Street, there's actually a statue of Ralph Cramden, and I'll put that up there, and that's been in the Port Authority for quite some time. And you could just see Ralph just, you know, strutting his stuff in his uniform and all that. And another fascinating thing was that Ralph, um, he, he drove a bus in Brooklyn, obviously. And so there's a famous bus depot in Sunset Park, which is right on 39th Street and 5th Avenue. Well, on June 30th of 1988, they actually renamed that depot as the Jackie Gleason Depot. And I'll pop a, a, a picture up there of the actual logo that's on all of the buses that's that belong to that depot. You know, that depot services about 12 or 15 bus lines in Brooklyn. And that was supposedly the one where Ralph Cramden drove out of. So I thought it was a really nice tribute that they turned around back then and they put this uh, depot. And they really take it seriously. You could see that, that logo on all the buses that come out of that depot. And it's just amazing. It's it's you'll see the picture right here. It's just the uh, the famous kind of famous scene from the, the honeymooners that you saw at the end of it in the beginning. I also want to put up now a picture of uh, 358 Chauncey Street where Ralph grew up, and uh, well where where the show took place. Show you a picture of what that looks like today. Um, as you might imagine, folks, there's a lot of uh, a lot of memorabilia with the with the honeymooners. Uh, people actually go and they go on the on the. There's like a bus route that goes on there and people go and they do that. So it's just a very beloved character that I think is always going to be a part of just Brooklyn history. You know, and, I, and me personally, I'm, I'm a big fan of um, Welcome Back, Carter. And I just did a video on that that you guys could check out. But as much as I love Welcome Back, Carter, and I think that's my favorite show personally that was ever set in Brooklyn, I have to give the nod to the Honeymooners because just the sheer impact that that has made I mean, no matter where you are, like I'm in Florida, you can go to any kind of store that sells like pop culture stuff and you're going to find stuff on the Honeymooners. You're going to find people talking about Ralph Cramden. Um, just an icon for just bus drivers. And it's just, um, you got to give the nod to it. And uh, so for me, I have to say, the best show ever set in Brooklyn was actually the Honeymooners. And it's just so Brooklyn. Even where the show was made, the show was actually filmed in New York City at the Adelphi Theater. I'll pop a picture up of that. So everything about the honeymoon is just totally screams Brooklyn. You know, and you could just picture Ralph Cramden doing all the Brooklyn things. You know, um, going to Nathan's, going to Coney Island. You know, go doing block parties, being at the uh, being at street fairs, all these different things that you know Ralph probably did and enjoyed with Alice and with with, with Trixie and with Ed Norton. I mean, just. Um, all kinds of things so the character is just so beloved in american culture that i don't think it's ever really going to go away so of course um jackie gleason the star of the show he was famous for being in a lot of other things he was very famous for so many things but one of the things i liked him and the first thing that i saw him in was the Smokey and the bandit movies he played sheriff buford t justice and just like in the honeymooners he had all these classic insults he had this very dumb son that was with him named junior and he was always ranking on the son. You never really met the wife, but he was always ranking on the wife. And uh, that's where I first started really liking Jackie Gleason. And then I started watching The Honeymooners, I guess, a little more. I had always kind of seen it because I watched it on Channel 11. A big shout out to Channel 11, the old Channel 11 back in New York. That's where I started watching The Twilight Zone. Started watching The Honeymooners. Watched Star Trek. All the famous shows that I watched pretty much was mostly on Channel 11. Channel 5 and Channel 9 as well. Channel 9 had the Mets. Of course, I watched a ton of Mets games on 9. But Channel 11, I think, was the main station for I think, my friends and myself that we watched when we were kids. Before I go, I wanted to throw in a famous thing about Jackie Gleason that not a lot of people know. Of course, like conspiracy theorists kind of know this, but um, what people don't know is one of Jackie Gleason's big hobbies, obviously besides food because the guy liked to eat, but one of his big hobbies was actually UFOs. And... You know, I guess if you look back in history, the most famous thing in history happened 
you know, at Roswell in 1947, which is what everybody points to, and not to go into that whole thing, but one of Jackie Gleason's major interests was UFOs. So, of course, Jackie Gleason being Jackie Gleason, he, um, he was very friendly with a lot of celebrities, and of course, very friendly with a lot of politicians. Now, one of the politicians he was very, he was very close to was President Nixon. So, there's a story that goes back to that one year when Jackie Gleason was in Florida, um, he, uh, President Nixon was down there, and President Nixon visited him, or he visited him, whatever way it worked out. Well, supposedly they got to talking about UFOs. Now, again, not to go too much into the UFO thing, but people who believe in UFOs and people who talk conspiracy theories, one of the big things about the UFO thing is that Dwight, D, Dwight David Eisenhower, who was the president during uh, 1952 to 1960, and Nixon was the pre vice president under him, supposedly Dwight Eisenhower met aliens, and he was the last president other than Nixon to really know a lot of what was going on, and he supposedly had a meeting with them or whatever. But because Nixon was very in on this, he supposedly picked up Jackie Gleason one day, and he said to him, hey, you know, you like aliens, do you want to go to an army base? I'll take you to see them. So of course, Jackie Gleason was like mystified, and of course he agreed to it. And supposedly um, Nixon and Gleason and a car full of Secret Service agents went to an army base, and they went in, and they actually saw they actually saw aliens in there. And according to Jackie Gleason's wife, uh, Jackie Gleason was actually a little freaked out by it. And supposedly he didn't like eat for a week after that. He was just so like kind of confused by it, but. He went on to eat after that, I'm sure, which he did. Um, but I just figured I'd throw that in there because that's kind of like one of the things that a lot of people don't know about Jackie Gleason that conspiracy theorists kind of do know. And who knows if it's true? It'd be nice if it was true. In fact, if it's true, let me know where it is. I'll try to go there. And I mean, I don't have any special clearance, but who knows? Maybe they'll let me in. Maybe they'll say, hey, it's that guy from Brooklyn who does all those videos. Who knows? Who knows? Everybody, as always, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this video. I really appreciate it. Um, every time you watch one of my videos, you're helping to combat suicide. Uh, we are we're starting a foundation for my son who we lost last August. It's called the Waffles Foundation. You can visit us on the Facebook page for the Waffles Foundation. We are having a website built currently as I speak. That should be up uh, running soon. Uh, today is August 8th, I believe. So we're hoping to get our 5013C accreditation within a couple of weeks. So I'll let you know as soon as that happens. Uh, we have to really stamp this out, folks. There's way too many people that we're losing to this terrible thing. We just lost Elvis Presley's grandson a few weeks ago. So it's just a very terrible thing. So I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, Matt, I love you. I miss you. I wish uh, you were here with me. But we're going to try to do the best in your name that we possibly can. So, folks, thanks for joining me. Have a great day. And I'll see you real soon on the next video. Take care now, folks. Bye-bye.